refreshing sleep? Ah, oh, Traveler, we meet again. What? You don't remember me? Chess as an inspiration for the Gnosis is a fascinating concept. The pieces of chess aren't known to have any true lore meaning. The 64 squares conceived just out of tactical play and strategy. Chess in and of itself is not a game rich with story. But look at any form of modern media and chess is equated to something grander than itself. A game of patience. An understanding of principles beyond your opponent. The skill of planning, preparation, and observation that is usually unseen by the naked eye. Combinations, moves, sacrifices. What might be seen as blunders are actual tactical traits. No one truly knows what's going on through a player's head except the players themselves. That's why today, I will be diving into one of Genshin's most important chess pieces, the Queen of Genshin Impact's tale, Venti. Welcome to Venti and the Queen Gnosis. I'll be connecting his story, personality, and future roles in the game with the potential symbolism that the Queen of the Board shares. If you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe and like this video. And as a disclaimer, this is just a personal theory and character analyses. None of it is indicative of the final product. And for today's question, if the Queen Gnosis were to be given to any other playable character, who do you think would be a good fit as well? My answer for this one would be Ning Guang, but leave yours down in the comments. And with that, let's begin. The Queen is one of the, if not the most, powerful piece in the entirety of the chessboard. Able to move to any direction it wants, the Queen is best described in the word freedom. Queens are unparalleled by bishops and rooks in the long grasp of the game. Play against anyone and they will tell you that once the queen gets taken, it's that ominous feeling of irreplaceable dread that lingers every time you play. You get forked by a horse or a rook, or you blunder your queen in some way, it's that feeling that you just lost your most valuable piece that eats you alive. And when the queen gets taken, a checkmate isn't far behind. That feeling of ominous dread was the same emotion encapsulated in the first time we see a Gnosis get taken. Out of all the Gnosis gives, Venti's Gnosis being taken from him is still the most brutal. La Senora coming into frame belittling Venti, Venti seemingly trapped in her ice unable to escape, and La Senora piercing through his heart to steal the queen. The emotions of distress and dismay from both the Traveler and Venti show the gravity of the situation very well. And the talk afterward also shares that same urgency to get the noses back. Except it doesn't. For a scene so packed with facial emotions, the atmosphere doesn't really match it. Venti's constant jabs at Senora even while she's down, Venti not attacking Senora back despite being an Archon with the Gnosis, and that lack of urgency to retrieve the alleged power source of the Animo Archon after being taken. You would think that Venti, for all his description that the Gnosis is an elevated form of the Visions and that the Gnosis allegedly holds the power of the Animo Archon, would be frazzled or at the very least somewhat bothered by the Fatui taking it. But he's not. In chess, this is known as a tactical sacrifice. Maybe even a trade. Or even better, a gambit. The sacrifice of a material to gain a more advantageous position. The true intentions of Venti in this scene are unknown, but what we do know is that Venti is aware that the Fatui are going after the power greater than the Valens. I fear this might fall short of their true intentions. I think they intend to use Barbados's connection to the wind to draw him out. The god of animal? Hasn't been seen for more than a thousand years. What makes you think that's their intention? Oh, uh... uh... <laughs> Maybe he gave the Gnosis for a grander plot. Maybe he didn't give the Gnosis away and just lied to Senora by replacing the Gnosis with something else. Maybe the true Gnosis is with the Valen in the last scene of the Archon quest. Maybe Venti is just waiting for something bigger to happen, like how a chess player normally does. If you can give away a piece of material to set in place the other pieces, or in this case, the other cogs in Genshin's story, then you should. Venti's overall plan is still not fully realized. And the best we can do is just wait patiently. But now that the queen's gnosis is with the Saritza, does that mean that Venti's role as the queen is over? Well, not necessarily. I believe that his role as the queen of the board stems deep in his characterization. Venti is a god that never lost his ideal. 
There's the question if the Gnosis changes form when an ideal is altered because the god either changed it or the original god of it is dead. But for Venti, he's always been the god of freedom as far as we know. Unlike justice, wisdom, eternity, and life. Venti was part of the original seven like Zhang Li. So instead we move on to what does it mean to represent the queen? Well, the first one is value. The queen is the most important piece of the board. Therefore, Venti is the most important character in the story of Genshin. And throughout the Archon quests, this acknowledgement and respect to Venti's character constantly gets repeated. Venti is the last Archon we currently have that has gone unquestioned by the Traveler, despite Venti obviously knowing what happened in the Cataclysm because the first time we even meet Venti, he was talking about Durin. Durin was a massive threat to Mondstadt during the Cataclysm, meaning Venti is very much awake by that point. Venti is also the Archon with the most ties to the God of Time. The God of Time, Istaroth, is the god mentioned in Enkanamiya's lore and the Raiden Shogun's Part 2 story quest. But the God of Time is long ago another deity of Mondstadt that seemingly disappeared. The Thousand Winds Temple and the Lost Island in Mondstadt are some of the last hints of her existence. It's unknown when she disappeared, but we know she used to rule alongside Barbados. Istaroth is potentially the closest hint we have to Celestia given that she might be a shade of Phanis, the primordial one. If Venti has ties with her, this means Venti is the key to understanding the true intentions and history of Celestia. Venti has constantly been our source of information for the gods, like the true purpose of the vision wielders, their roles as allergens, the gnosis, and even hints about the other archons and the island in the sky. If you go to Venti's statue and decipher it, it says the gateway to Celestia. Venti is also freer to talk about the gods and even deter the traveler from thinking of it favorably, using words like tastes foul or bland to describe the garden of the gods. It's actually quite a curious sight. Venti seems hesitant to talk about Celestia beyond the surface level, so if he really wanted to thwart the traveler's curiosity, the best way to do that is by making Celestia not really a big deal. Venti is our only source of information, but that doesn't mean he's reliable either. As for the value of Mondstadt, Mondstadt has the greatest ties to Conria. Not only is the Spiral Abyss portal there, but characters with Conrian history, at least the ones we know so far, are situated in Mondstadt, Kaya and Albedo. Even La Senora and the Bloodstained Knight have strong Conrian, or at least Cataclysm, connections, and they're both from Mondstadt. The value of Mondstadt in the late game is unparalleled by the other nations. The second one that connects him with the Queen is his role as the Observer. A Queen is able to move to all squares, but the Queen is also able to see the most squares. On the board, the queen can defend the most pieces. The queen works as the observer, even when it's not fully utilized or activated. Venti's role in Genshin works the same way. He's a watcher, minding his own business but steering the story along. His quote about the seeds of stories actually bodes well with this. Yes, I'm also curious about these stories myself. But who knows, they may merely be akin to the old saying in Mondstadt. Seeds of stories brought by the wind and cultivated by time. Stories brought onto the wind will bloom into legends in due time. Venti's role in Mondstadt's story is quite passive. He sleeps for most of his existence as an archon, but his slumber might not be of his own volition either. Much like seeds, he sprouts when the time is most opportune. Venti's there when he's needed. In the events he's in, his mission is to plant the seeds of stories by either jumpstarting the plot or pushing the plot forward. Or he's always just lingering, hinting that he knows more than he lets on. Venti's intentions are never clear. Here's just a few examples. In the Archon quest, Venti was crucial in healing the Valen because he had the most information. In Jean's story quest, we get a hint of Venti saying that he'll be performing for a private occasion, hinting to Jean's surprised get-together. I have a performance tonight, and without my spare strings, I shall have to disappoint my audience. I dare say that a private performance played using these very same strings would not be an excessive way to show my gratitude. <laughs> In his own character story, he's not even the main focus, but instead we help a man named Stanley. Venti acts like a chaperone, and while he says it's for the wine of course, he also opens up to the traveler that Stanley reminds him about himself. In the manga, he tests Vanessa's courage to see if she really had what it takes to be considered a hero. He asks her to come with him and escape, leaving her people behind, but Vanessa says that she won't. 
The final panel of their exchange zooms in on Venti with a satisfied smile. In the 1.6 event quest, Venti is the reason the group even gets to the archipelagos in the first place. While it makes sense that the traveler searched for Venti to ask for help, Kaya, Diluc, Albedo, and Razor being sent the same way there might be a little suspicious. On a side note, since Albedo was the one that helped set up this island, I actually don't doubt that Alice asked him to seek the help of the bard. In 2.6's Iridori Festival, Venti guides the party to the right place at the right time. With Singcho's editor being caught, to Ayaka's involvement in the plot, to Venti's earlier arrival in Inazuma, to Yai and Venti's suspicious conversation, to Venti knowing that the whole ploy was made by Ayato. Oh, are you asking about the one who left the stories of the five Kasen? <laughs> I do happen to know their true identity, but things may be a little more complicated than you think. Venti is just there. But Venti is everywhere. Even now, he hints that Mondstadt's going to be facing something big with the potential of Albedo's art going haywire. How do you explain white chalk and black soil? Or the Earth's dense crust amidst the emptiness of space? Same reason the purest soil gave birth to human life. It's an ancient power with unmistakable properties. Trying to harness it is dangerous indeed. I can't imagine what would happen if someone lost control of it in the city. <laughs> Never mind. What goes on within Mondstadt's walls is up to Mondstadt's people to deal with. <laughs> Venti's role in the stories he's in is never fully clear. As though Venti is actually constantly Barbados in everything he does for others. He also talks about perception. Venti might be a bit of a klutz or a drunkard, but Venti's wisdom is not to be messed with. Hmm. Though I've long since viewed this scenery a great many times, there is something different about seeing it again with you. Surely you're not still concealing some other wondrous abilities. Hmm. <sighs> Even if you were, it would simply further prove that my intuition is correct. No, not intuition. Rather, I've lived for a long time now, so you could say I have some experience in reading people. <sighs> you know, you're so smart it almost makes me uncomfortable sometimes. But then, maybe it's right that true friends can tell what the other is thinking. And third is Venti's backstory. When you play the game of chess, if a pawn reaches the end of the board, it undergoes promotion. It can be promoted to a knight, a rook, a bishop, and most importantly, a queen. Venti's backstory starts from nothing, just a pawn in the grand scheme of things. In those days, Venti was but a single thread of the thousand winds that roared through the northern lands. He, who would in latter days be known as Barbados, was but a tiny elemental spirit, without a shard of divine dignity, a breeze that brought subtle changes for the better. Barbados would then meet a bard of Mondstadt who would sing with the wind spirit, and it was through his friendship with the bard and the citizens of Mondstadt that he would understand the people better. When his friend died, Barbados was moved by the sacrifice of the nameless bard and adopted his face. As he ascended to the title of the Animal Archon, Barbados carried his friend's legacy until the very end. It was during this pivotal defeat of the Caribbean that Barbados becomes the queen he was always destined to be. His story calls him the tiny seeds of hope, but as the time of God said, he would bloom into a legend. The story of the queen is interesting when paralleled with Venti. His story elevates what would otherwise be considered a simple piece on the chessboard. As I've said before, no one really knows what Venti's intentions are. Until we get the part 2 of his story, we will never truly understand how he operates. We haven't gotten the chance to know the player, we haven't gotten the chance to know Barbados.